time. <gasps> You're, were you rolling? Yeah. <laughs> Say hi. Oh, okay. She wants to go. <laughs> I didn't even know we were rolling. Hi guys, it's 11.55 p.m. When are you gonna film a video? Nighttime, I guess. Um, just for the record, I think that this is an important piece of history here. And it's been a year, guys. It's been quite a year already. We're being, you know, social distancing and isolating and quarantining. I think. I think we're having a time. So I'm here, and I am here for you to talk about Bakugan. This is Rose Gold Spoiler. I'm here for you. I don't know what that means. I'm not gonna like deliver food or groceries in these trying times. Um, I'm Jessalyn. Um, you also may know me as Poppy, and that's cool. Uh, Baku Girl is the fancy name that was coined for the sake of memes. Um, the topic of this video is one that I would consider fairly important, especially if you are a little bit newer to Bakugan, the TCG. When you enter the Bakugan Pro community, there's a lot of cards that are discussed. A lot of people just know what the different cards are based off of their title. Sometimes they memorize by effect, um, and then they'll talk about that. But basically, if you see some of these names slung around, these are some of what I would consider the most discussed and even used cards. So this is going to be year one Bakugan cards that you should know. This is just a list that I put together. Uh, it's by no means the full list and uh, some people may have a couple of things that they would choose to add or they would take out. It just kind of depends. To start the list off, I'm going to be talking about the essentials in quotation marks. Cute little card that says essentials with quotation marks. Woohoo! In my opinion, these are some of the most important cards to consider uh, for each fact when building a deck. I got my handy dandy notebook. It's Blue's Clues. Okay, so we're gonna start off with Pyrus. Um, for Pyrus, a card that I would consider fairly important, basically if you're playing a Pyrus deck, you should probably be running this card. This is by no means a requirement, of course. None of this is like official information, um, but this card is pretty strong, um, fairly low cost. It's just, it's very useful. So if you're playing Pyrus, you should be running Super Fuel. Super Fuel is a one cost card, and it says you must reroll your Bakugan. If you open on the reroll, the next card you play this turn costs three energy less to play. This opens up uh, plenty of cards depending on what turn you play it, but you can even play it turn one, you get it out, you reroll, you open on a core, and then you get three energy. You can play a card that you would normally have to reserve for third turn to play first turn, which makes it a pretty, pretty dang good, good card. And it's a reroll. Um, people will say that rerolls are fairly important, especially if you're rolling is kind of mediocre or whatever, or if you just really want to grab a different core or something, um, depending whatever your plan is, <laughs> Super Fuel is a really good card. It's also, it's a really spicy card right now. You're probably gonna hate me calling it that, but I would consider Super Fuel to be really spicy because it's in high demand. Uh, as of right now, we don't have reprinted cards. Um, we're, fingers crossed, hoping that Super Fuel is going to be in a reprint in the faction boxes that they have coming out, um, as well as the blind boxes, or just if they do reprints in the future, um, because Super Fuel is like a $40 card right now? Something like that. It's like 30 or $40, maybe it's 40 for the hex, I don't know. Um, but Super Fuel is like super desirable and really useful and really hard to get. So, uh, right now, um, I don't know if you watch, <laughs> if any of you guys watch, like, um, Magnus of YouTube, Matt, if you watch his Market Watch Wednesdays, he usually looks at, like, Price of Super Fuel and stuff like that, and it's, it's been, it's been exponential increase. It's, it's ruining the economy. Thanks, guys. Thanks. So these next two cards go hand in hand. Um, they're not considered essential necessarily for building a Pyrus deck, but it is a strategy that you can consider 
utilizing. Uh, these cards are talked about a lot. It go The strategy goes by a couple of different names. Um, you may have seen how hotly debated it may be, um, but it is going to be Mac and Might of Sindius. Um, so commonly called Might Mac or Mac Mock, depending on what type of human being you are. Potato, potato, I don't really care, I guess. Anyway, that's a whole thing. It's also Tuna Mac. Um, so, Mac is a hero card, uh, it's four cost, and it says the turn you play this, the victor is decided by highest damage instead of highest B, and then your Bakugan have plus two damage. Um, this is really great for if you have any Bakugan that do have decent, uh, middle to high damage, um, because then you can, you know, instead of having higher B power, you can have the higher damage and determine victory based off of that. Uh, if you run a three set of that and then a three set of Midas Indius, you pretty much have six cards that do that kind of thing. Midas Indius is a two cost plus one damage. This turn, victor is decided by highest damage instead of highest B. Mac stays out the whole time as a hero, uh, unless destroyed by a hero destruction card. Um, gives your Bakugan plus two each time. You could easily have, you know, three max out, have plus six, and then plus six damage, and then uh, constantly or frequently try to determine, you know, burning through your opponent's deck. Not really burn, burn's a different thing. But kind of like blowing through your opponent's deck by just slaughtering them. Um, it's kind of fun. Uh, I found personally it's not as fun for me to run it as it is for me to be able to counter it. Um, my horsepower deck is really good at hard countering Macmoc as an effect, or sorry, as a strategy, um, because those ponies all seem to have good B power, and then your damage. Those ponies all seem to have really good damage, and so it hard counters, and then. Yeah, it's fun to blast people's decks with that. But you will see Mac and Midas Indias talked about a lot, and they are to paired together pretty, pretty interesting, good strategy that you can include in a Pyrus deck. So, moving on from Pyrus, we're going to enter Darkus. Uh, for the Darkus faction, a card that is considered fairly essential, basically if you're running Darkus, you should be running this card, um, Pact of Darkness. That is a flip card, it's four cost, it's stop non-Darkus, um, and it has a sacrifice effect. Um, you may discard a card to play this for free. So. You're taking damage, right? You're taking damage, and you flip over your Pact of Darkness. You look at your cards, you have like four cards in hand, and there's one that you, you know, you don't necessarily need. Um, you can discard that, and then you can stop the damage so long as it's not coming from a Darkest Bakugan from your opponent for free. Um, it's a really, really good card. It is also really spicy right now, just like Super Fuel. Um, it's gone down in value a little bit. I think, what, it's like $20 right now? It's a $20 card. Hex is, you know, $30, $35. Um, but it, it's, it's also one... Now we're kind of like fingers crossed, hoping for a reprint on Pact of Darkness because it's a it's a pretty strong card. One of the best flips in the game. It's it's easily one of the best flips in the game. You're gonna see that one talked about a lot. People call it Pact. Um, so if they say Pact, Pact of Darkness, that's what they're talking about. Um, going on from Darkest, we're going to enter Chaos. With Chaos, there's a couple of cards that I consider fairly essential. Um, the first one is going to be Wayne. Wayne is a two-cost card. Um, destroy an Evo that was not played this turn. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, if, if your opponent, you know, is running Evo cards, which people tend to run at least some, and they have a Bakugan that is fairly strong in its Evo, you play, so long as it wasn't played, that very turn that you're going to try to wane it, you can slap wane on the table the next turn, destroy the evo, and problem solved. You can knock down their B power and their damage and whatever effect that that evo has. Um, so if you're not running wane in a chaos deck, what are you doing? You can you can you can build around it. You don't have to play it. You don't have to really run any of these cards. But these are pretty good cards that you probably should be running. 
Um, however, uh, now that we're entering, you know, or we have entered year two, uh, Wayne is probably going to go down in its value as far as, like, being played goes. Um, it's not going to be as effective because Baku Gear, um, it doesn't destroy that, and that can subsidize Evo. Instead of having an Evo, you can play Baku Gear, as well as with Fusion Force coming out. That's going to be, like, the second set this year. Um, it probably doesn't destroy fusions. I would assume it doesn't destroy. Yeah, so it doesn't really destroy fusions. Uh, so Wayne is great for Evos. Uh, it's been more powerful. It is going to lose some power going forward. The next card that I'd like to talk about is another flip card. Um, this is a card that was really, really effective in year one. Uh, the meta kind of leaned towards what this flip stops. It's Confuse. Confuse is a one cost stop a Bakugan holding a Fire Fist or a Magic Shield. Um, the meta was leaning towards in year one Fire Fist and Magic Shield cores for Bakugan. Um, if you were playing really powerful decks, they usually had Fire Fist cores and Magic Shield cores. Um, so Confuse just stops damage. It's one cost. You can do it immediately first turn. Or, you know, if you're not fully tapped out, you just have like one energy left later turns. Stops that damage. Pretty good card. Um, also, one of the better flips that currently exists. Um, we'll see how core meta changes. Um, Helix is looking pretty spicy right now uh, for year two, but basically as far as year one goes, Confuse, fantastic flip. Still probably will be going forward, we'll just have to see how the core meta changes. Um, another flip would be Stand Together. Stand Together is like the Chaos version of Pact of Darkness. Um, it's a four cost stop non Chaos and it has a domination effect. If your Bakugan are holding the most Baku cores, this is free. So it's not quite as good to play as Pact of Darkness is, but if you are running Chaos, you should probably be running this. Um, Chaos has a lot of ways to get cores um, so that you're on top of your opponent and then you can just easily, you know stand together, stop damage from a non chaos Bakugan for free. So, the next is Aquos, and Aquos is Aquos? 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 Some people go Aquos. Whoa. Whoa. As far as Aquos cards go, Aquos has a lot of good cards. <sighs> Thanks, guys. Um, the first one is Wave Slash. Wave Slash is a three cost card. It's plus 300B. Uh, however, it has a flow effect, and a flow effect is an additional effect uh, when you've played a different card or another card this turn before uh, whatever card you're using. And on Wave Slash, it is if you played another card this turn plus 1000B instead of 300B. So you play any um, card previously, uh, and then you're able to slap down Wave Slash for three cost, um, and then you can just barrel over B power pretty quickly. Uh, for three energy, it's not that bad of a card. It's pretty good, pretty essential for Aquas. Um, the next one is going to be a card that some people really love and some people really hate. It depends on how much you like control. Um, Blinding Ink is a two cost card and it is a negate card. Uh, negate an action card that costs three energy or less. Um, so if your opponent played Wave Slash, you can negate it. If your opponent played Super Fuel, you can negate it. If your opponent played Wayne, you can negate it. And then they just, that card doesn't do anything. So it's pretty, it's a pretty strong card. Uh, obviously it doesn't stop anything for energy or more. Um, but a lot of people are ten going to run lower cost cards because it's effective to be able to run as, or to put down as many combos as possible. Um, so Blinding Ink. Negate cards. If you like that kind of thing. <laughs> um, the next one is going to be, uh, Bakugan Resurgence, uh, BR, Resurgence, whatever you want to call it from, uh, the second card set from the first year. Uh, it is BR Shun Kazami. Kazami? Kazami? Anyway, Shun. So it's BR Shun is what people call it. It's a three energy hero card, and when you open a Bakugan, you may draw a card. Um, you can have up to three Shuns on the board, obviously, uh, but basically you roll out your Bakugan, it hits a core, it opens, you get to draw a card from your deck. Uh, so it really helps with hand control. It's really, really, a uh, really unpopular card to be running. He's surrounded by Bakugan in this photo. He is just, he's swimming in them. It's just, the lad is swimming. Um, Shun, 
the lad. It's a very popular draw engine for competitive decks. You're going to see him all over the place. Um, the final Aquas card that I have on my essentials list is going to be Deep Dive. Deep Dive is a one energy draw card and you may reroll your Bakugan. Um, the beauty of this is it's another kind of draw engine for Aquas, but it also says you may reroll. Unlike Super Fuel that we saw at the beginning of the video where it says you must reroll your Bakugan, this one is a may effect, so you don't have to reroll. You can, it's a great reroll, it's one cost, you know, if you want to or need to, say you missed or something, you can easily just use that as a reroll, then you also get to draw a card, um, but this you can also use it for just card draws, it's really... It's pretty good. It's pretty nifty. You're going to see a lot of people playing that one as well. So a reroll and drawing a card are both really powerful things that you can do in competitive play. Um, so it, it being able to do that for one energy, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good card. I've never seen anybody use Aquas and not slam that in there. So yeah, that's true. That's why. I Me. One. What? I didn't run Deep Dive in Pegapuff Girls. Oh, I know. That was a different Brain geyser. Brain geyser. That's a card. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's not essentials. Um, and finally, we are going to move into Ventus. Um, the first card that I'm going to talk about with Ventus is Nature's Power. Nature's Power is a one cost action card. Give a non Ventus Bakugan minus 500B. Nature's Power is a really great uh, debuff there for B power. Um, a lot of people don't play Ventus. Um, there were probably only a couple of people last year who really played Ventus even at all. Um, so chances are your opponent is not going to be running Ventus. Maybe that'll change going forward, um, but even still, usually mm, people have at least just one Ventus Bakugan on the team. Um, so if you're playing Ventus and your opponent has Bakugan that are not Ventus and you are against a non-Ventus Bakugan, you can easily just whip down a Nature's Power for minus 500B. Sometimes it's a pretty difficult B to recover too, so it's a pretty good card. And finally, for Ventus, we have Tiger Reflex. Tiger Reflex is a four cost flip card. It is stop non Ventus, and it is a turbo card. Turbo is if you have the most energy cards in play, uh, then there's some sort of effect. For Tiger Reflex, it is you may play Tiger Reflex for free if you have the most cards in play. Really, the best reason to be playing Tiger Reflex would be if you are doing the ramping effect if you are trying to get the most energy. Um, I would say probably don't play it if you aren't going for having more energy than your opponent, um, because then it would be a four cost stop non Ventus card. Uh, so you're probably going to want to make sure that you are ramping in order to get that turbo effect. So those are the cards that I find most essential for playing Perfection. Um, not necessarily any guidelines you have to follow, nothing official about it, um, but they are cards that are really highly talked about, cards that are used a lot from year one, um, that still are pretty useful for the most part going forward. So those are cards that you should probably be playing for each faction. Um, if not, you should at least be considering them. Um, you don't have to play any of those cards if you don't want to. But they're pretty good, so you might at least want to think about it. So the next list is going to be some notable cards, cards that I personally find talked about a lot. Uh, they're going to be perhaps more conditional or maybe not as good or effective as the essentials list. However, they are uh, considerable cards, cards that you might want to look into uh, for each faction. Uh, we're going to go a little faster with these ones. The first one, uh, we're going to start off with Pyrus again. The first card is Song of Fire. Song of Fire is a three cost card and it gives you plus five energy. Um, so say your turn three, you can easily whip down a Song of Fire. You have, you know, capability to play five energy card, maybe two lower energy cards. So you can do basically what you'd be able to do at least turn five. Um, Super fuel into Song of Fire. <laughs> that, that would be nifty. You could do that. Um, then you wouldn't be using up. Then you could do that first turn. You'd have five energy. Anyway, um, so yeah, Song of Fire, pretty good Pyrus card. You don't have to play it, but it is a good energy cheating out card. Um, the next one is Hot Potato. Hot Potato is mashed potatoes. <laughs> Uh, Hot Potato is a two cost card. Uh, it says remove an enemy's Bakugan, uh, remove an enemy Bakugan's Bakukor and negate its effect. You return the Bakukor onto the field face down. So, you whip down Hot Potato, you take your enemy's Bakukor, and you get to put it back down on the field. So, 
they have a plus 650 magic shield. Pluck it right off, place it in front of your stuff where they can't get it, and suddenly you have a 650 magic shield. Not bad, right? So, Hot Potato is one that you'll see semi-frequently. It's not bad. It's a pretty good card. Some people don't like it. It's kind of fun to play. I don't know. It's kind of fun to go, you know, yoink with a card. Okay. I like when you said remove your enemy's Bakugan. <laughs> remove your enemy's <laughs> Bakugan. Just take, take it and freaking yeet it. Speaking of core stealing, or core removing, I guess. Speaking of core, not stealing, core removing. Uh, Inferno Wings. Inferno Wings is a three cost card plus 300B. Remove all Baku cores, enemy Bakugan hold, and negate their effects. This one, you don't place the cores back down on the field. Your opponent does. Uh, you do not. However, it takes all those cores off, negates all of their effects. Sucks. Yeah, so Inferno Wings. Hi, criminal. Hi, common criminal. Come here. Hi. <laughs> Is there going to be a cat in every video I make? I don't know. Probably. People are going to think it's on purpose, but she actually is just really intrusive. She genuinely just comes in at the terrible time. Terrible times. And her tail is always in the frame, no matter what. Okay. Um, so the next card, the hotly, it's just cat butt in my frame. <laughs> Are you having a good time? <laughs> okay, um, the next one is going to be a hero card, Dan Kuzo. Dan Kuzo is a four cost hero card. When you open a Bakugan, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's not a flip card, you may play it for free. It's pretty good, Pyrus, um hero card. You're gonna see it ran a lot in Pyrus decks. Um, you get a Dan out there every time you open your Bakugan, whether it picks up a core or not. If it opens over the hide matrix, um, you get to flip over the top card of your deck. Play it for free if it's not a flip. That's cool. Uh, if you're playing this card, you want to probably be running a low flip count just to make sure that you get Dan to work each time. Um, but it's really nifty because then you basically for free get to play any energy cost card. The next card, kind of similar effect to Dan, is Air Zero. Uh, some people like this card, some people don't like this card. Ooh, controversy. Um, is a two cost card. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it is not a flip card, you may play it for free. A lot of people are going to hate that I mention this card. Feel the hate. Let it burn. Uh, moving on to Darkus. Darkus has Dark Fortune. It is a three cost card. It says search your deck for an Evo card, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Dark Fortune is really nifty if your deck is Evo reliant. My horsepower deck needed its Evos, so Dark Fortune's a great one for that. Um, if you're, you're, it sucks when you don't get out your Evos and you need your Evos. So if you have Darkus in your deck, Dark Fortune is one to definitely look at if you're using Evos. Um, it sucks when you don't get your Evos out. It sucks, man. It sucks. And another one um, is Darkest Snare. Darkest Snare is a free flip card. It's zero cost, and it stops all magic shields. Um, for the Jet Kuso tournament at the end of 2019? Beginning of 2020, I guess? Actually, it was like the 2nd of January, wasn't it? Something like that. So like January 2nd, um, but we, we were playing year one cards, obviously, because um, Armored Elite stuff wasn't really out even remotely, hardly at all yet. Um, I added Dark Snare into my horsepower deck briefly uh, because the meta was leaning to the core meta was leaning towards magic shields and fire fists, so I had Confuse in there, and Dark Snare stopping those magic shields. We'll see how that goes moving forward, what cores are going to be more meta-oriented. It's great for if you know people are running a lot of magic shields. Why doesn't Darkus have more good cards? I don't know why Darkus doesn't have more good cards. I don't know. Somebody's got something against, like, purple. I don't know. Sucks. Sucks. So, moving on to Chaos. Chaos has a few notable cards that are really worth talking about. Um... The first one that I'm going to bring up is Consort. Or consort? I don't know. People keep pronouncing it differently. Whatever. Potato, potato, hot potato. It's Consort. Hot potato? Consort. Hot potato. 
Um, Consort is a three cost card. It is attach a Baku core from the field to an open Baku gun, so it's core stealing. You can pick up one of your cores that you know is really good, or if you figure your opponent is running a pretty good core, you can go ahead and yoink that. Um, especially with uh, gear reduction coming up for Armored Elite and going forward with Baku gear, uh, it's a great way to nab those reduction cores um, off of the field. Uh, especially green fists. Which brings us to Mega Punch. Mega Punch is a one cost uh, attach a green fist from the field to an open Bakugan. So it's like really conditional for green fists. However, you want to get the gear reduction cores. You know, they have like the minus two gear reduction green fists. You get like two of those on there from like Consort and Mega Punch or maybe even just rolling onto one and just Mega Punching the other one. You can easily get out like a four cost gear really early. Turn one. You know? Maybe. Yeah. Get, get out that gear. Um, and <laughs> speaking of Green Fist, because apparently Chaos really likes Green Fist, Holy Flame is a really good Chaos Green Fist card. Holy Flame is a one cost. Uh, it's plus 300B. If that Bakugan is holding Green Fist, plus 600B instead. It's really conditional in that you need Green Fist in your deck in Chaos. Um, but... If you're running Chaos, and if your Bakugan have Green Fist cores, you should be running Holy Flame. You really don't have an excuse at that point. Put in Holy Flame, 600B for just one energy. Fantastic card. You should be running it if you have Chaos and Green Fist. Do it. Anyway, and finally for Chaos, we have Light's Courage. Light's Courage is a 2 cost plus 400B domination effect if your Bakugan hold the most Baku cores plus 800B instead. So for 2 cost, 800B if you have the most cores. I don't know, Mega Punch and then Light's Courage and you just, you got, you got your buffs. Get, get your cores, get your domination, buff, buff yourself. Buff, okay. Um, so, Aquas. Aquas, Aquas, Aquas. Aquas is the favorite child. You know, has a lot of good cards. We all know this. You know, they say, we don't play favorites. We don't have a favorite child. Aquas is the favorite child. Here's some good Aquas cards that are worth talking about. Sinkhole. Sinkhole is a four cost Age of Arliss card. Negate a hero or action card. This is fantastic. Say goodbye to Dan Kuzo. Say goodbye to Chaos Maximus. sinkhole. It's kind of hard to get your hands on. Age of Arliss kind of had a limited release. Fingers crossed for reprints. Okay. Sinkhole is too good. I don't like sinkhole. Ugh. Okay. Don't run it. Don't. I mean, you could. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. I'm not your mom. I'm not in charge of you. The next card on this list is Aquify. Yeah. Aquify is on this list. Aquify is a one cost card. It is swap the Baku cores attached to the Bakugan you rolled this turn and the opposing Bakugan. So what that means is you roll out your Bakugan. You can roll onto like a minus 300 shield or whatever that you're running in your deck. Then you play Aquify for one energy and your opponent has to swap their core with yours. Suddenly they're debuffed by 300, you nab their magic shield. You have 650B and you probably get to keep that magic shield unless they steal it back somehow. It's a, it's a decent, uh, decent, decent, decent way to get those cores. Nab those cores. Uh, it's a good counter to Mega Pega, which is Maximus Pegatrix Ultra. That's armored elite. That is something we will talk about at another time. Aquify helps counter that. The next card we want to talk about is Liquid Darts. Uh, don't ask me why there's a space between Liquid and Darts. It could have just been all one. It's fine. Um, it's a three cost card plus 400B RLS power. If you have an RLS Bakugan on your team, this costs two less to play. It was an Age of Arliss card. They had this effect called Arliss Power in it. If you had an Arliss Bakugan on your team, you got some bonuses on some card effects. So you have to have an Arliss Bakugan on your team in order to get it to cost two energy less to play. So three cost reduced to one cost plus 400B. Not bad. Uh, the next Aquas card is Ninja Gear. It's free. It is a zero cost card and it says retract one of your open Bakugan. This is great if you want to just keep hitting your opponent with a Bakugan that is really powerful. You play it end of turn and you just 
keep on rolling, man. And you just boom, 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 one, two, punch, knock them out. If you got one Bakugan that's just really good, you just keep hitting them with it. Ninja gear, ninja gear, ninja gear. Just retract it, keep rolling. Finally, we are moving on to Ventus. Um, Ventus, uh, Tusk Guard is a six cost card, minus 800B. If you've played a card that costs five energy or more this turn, you may play this for free. So you play a card that's five energy, you have three Tusk Guards in hand, just hit them with like freaking, what is eight times three? 24, hit them with minus 2,400B, one after another. Uh, or you play one of them, you get the other two for free. It's pretty nifty if you're running Ventus. It's a debuff that you might want to consider playing for sure. Um, and finally, uh, Battle Brawler's Winton Styles. Um, going back to kind of what I was talking about with, with Tiger Reflex earlier, uh, Winton Styles is, uh, or Winton Styles is a good ramping card. Um, for energy, when you open a Bakugan, you may energize the top card of your deck. If you have 15 or more energy cards in play, your Bakugan have plus 1500B. That's 1500B. So, you get out Winton, turn 4, you start energizing the top card of your deck every time you open a Bakugan, and you can also energize at the start of turn, so you're getting out 2 energy to your opponent's 1 energy. You hit 15 energy cards, um, and suddenly your Bakugan will have that plus 1500B power. So it's really good for the ramping effect you're going to want to put that in there if you're running Ventus and if your goal is to ramp your energy. Um, so that is what I have for notable cards, cards that I feel like people should be considering for each faction. Um, they are also talked about fairly frequently, semi-frequently. You're gonna hear those uh, tossed around quite a bit. Um, so finally, most important cards, the completely non-essential Bakugan cards worth knowing. Got Max, got Boom, and you got Huge Knowledge. Just look them up. Well, they're right here. Whatever. Just Max, Boom, and Huge Knowledge. You want a meme? Go meme, folks. Have fun. This has been another Bakugan, I don't know, I'm Bakugan Brawl. Yeah, um, so cards, that's year one cards that you're going to want to uh, consider running for each faction. Uh, the essentials, not really like necessarily need to be played, but ones that are probably pretty good and are talked about and used a lot, uh, along with some notable cards that are at least worth considering per faction. Um, so, if you want to know what people are talking about, th those are those are what people are usually talking about. Um, going forward, I'm going to probably make a couple more videos for this. Um, I'll do one for like Armored Elite, um, and then the other Year 2 card sets going forward um, because we have uh, Fusion Force and Shields of Astroia. We'll look at all of those and kind of figure out what's the best or what's essential to be played as we get more information from playtesting as well as as more cards are released. So I hope that this gave you a more well-rounded resource for your Bakugan cards from year one and have a, have a, have a smacking good What? I have a smacking smackin good time. Have a, have a great big old brawl. Just... Knock them out, folks. Knock them out. <laughs> so, I have launched my Patreon page. Um, so, if you want to support me, uh, help me continue doing what I've started doing here, um, and see more of these goings-ons, have more deck stuff information available to you, you can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. I have different tiers on there. Go ahead, take a look at my Patreon. Uh, I believe like the middle tier allows you access to some deck profile listings of mine. So if you're interested in finding out about my decks, what I'm running, what I consider to be important for Mono Pegatrix, um, go ahead and, you know, give me a little support on Patreon and you will get uh, at least full access to Pegapuff Girls, which was my Ventus, Pyrus, Aquas, uh, Mono Pegatrix deck from year one. 
um, and I'll see what else I can cook up for you on there too. Um, so even if it's just a dollar a month too, that one doesn't have the deck profile, but you do get additional content. Support me on Patreon in these trying times, folks. Would really appreciate it. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at RoseGoldFerrari. Um, I'm also on Instagram at RoseGoldSpoiler. You know, click the little subscribe button. Click the little bell if you want to be notified of when I post new videos. And I'll see you around, folks. <laughs>